Well, come along, guys. Well, today we're finally doing the catch up with Gregoire. We have Gregory with us at last. Gregorio has joined us. We haven't. It's been a bit, Gregorio has been a bit lacking on the channel this uh, this season so far, just because of work and all the rest of it. But we thought we'd better do a bit of a catch up because he's had the bike mapped and everything. So catch up on how the GSXR is after its mapping. Um, and also, you know, we said before we're going to explain why you bought the GSXR and just did a little catch up, really. See what's going on. We've also got Alex with us as well, so uh, let us see. And we've got to make sure the technology works. Yeah, you're flashing, mate. You're flashing. So hopefully the technology will also behave itself. And this is the day I dropped my H2. <laughs> so if I'm a bit grumpy, <laughs> that's why. So here we are on the Suzuki 1000 and uh, yeah sorry I've not been around John this year really I don't know why well I think yeah, I don't know, it's just work it's just just timings getting things sorted there's been a sort of lack of bikes as well to be honest like comparison bikes you know I've struggled to get a few bikes from wheels this year as well for various reasons they've been giving them all to TMF instead <laughs> <laughs> not that you're not that you're bitter <laughs> yeah so give them to me because last year we did a few comparisons talking about tuonos and stuff weren't we you were going to buy a tuono and we never really explained why you got the gsxr over the sort of super duke or tuono why was that then greg tell us why well i'm sure that loads of your viewers will probably think that i'm mad because i think i don't know if i'm right or not and sorry to any other suzuki owners but i think people think that these are a little bit less exotic and a you know a little bit cheapy aren't they if you know what i mean but the reason i got it was um this is my third i think it's my third gsxr i've had a thousand k5 which obviously is the famous one and i've had a 750 as well which was a k7 and i loved them and i regretted selling both of them weirdly and I just was thinking about what I wanted something that was a good all-round bike for the road, John, really. And the problem with the Tuono, well, there are two things, really. I lo absolutely love it, and I'd still like to own one, I think. But um, I find Super Naked really comfortable with town work. But once you actually get out onto the open road, I'm not entirely convinced Super Naked's are better for me because you end up quite fatigued from the wind blast. So I wanted a comfortable sports bike and I really think that the Suzuki is one of the most comfortable road bike sports bikes. Yeah, well there's two isn't there? there there's the Suzuki and there's the S1000 double R it. They're, they're the two comfortable options aren't they for for sports bikes really. Exactly and then so the reason I didn't get the BMW S1000 double R I think is an amazing road bike. You know again it lacks and I know we've done the reviews and everyone will say I'm being contradictory but because it, it lacks a little bit in in character a bit but what it lacks in character it makes up for in absolutely fantastic all-round ability doesn't it yeah it and does, the reason yeah. i didn't get a bmw is two two reasons for that one it's more expensive than this quite a bit more expensive just being honest about it and secondly i prefer the look of the suzuki i just think it's a little bit more retro with this paint job and i just prefer it are we going right here John? yeah right here mate yeah well i borrowed that s that that s thousand r last week and you know, it reminded me a lot of my double i had and i just for road bikes i'm just finding now straight four engines are just great on the road they just they make are. a very easy bike to ride as a road bike don't they when v4s they're, they're, exactly. twins are absolutely amazing but you have to finesse them a little bit more you know they're, they're a little bit hard to work in town where a straight four yeah, you lack a bit of initial grunt, but that, that makes it just so nice on the throttle and so easy to ride. It, exactly, and you know, I'm riding now, This obviously this is 30 mile an hour slow speed stuff, and the engine on this is so flexible and so smooth, it actually makes riding, even in town, you know, it's not the optimum riding position in town a bike like this, 
but it's pretty comfy and but in terms of engine characteristics gearbox is so smooth and um you know going back to the mapping video that you and i did when i got this uh mapped and tuned you know the fueling now is so perfect everywhere which is the whole purpose of getting that done not you know i wasn't searching for more horsepower because it's you don't need it obviously but i was so pleased once this was done and the difference it made was brilliant so um so that's it really and, and now that i've obviously got it and i've been riding it normally it's a great bike i never ever feel uncomfortable on it john and i i can ride it for hours you know and i don't feel like i've got to get off it the seat's comfortable well, it's not you did too the cramped. tt on it you went to the isle of man tt on it didn't you and practiced yeah, with you and alex exactly. Yeah, Alex and I went to the TT back in end of May, beginning of June. We rode all the way up from the south coast of England, all the way up to Haitian. And uh, it's just amazing. I think the only thing that I wish it had uh, is cruise control. Uh, not obviously when you're at the Isle of Man itself, but just for the ride up there, because you end up with a bit of wrist and finger ache. It's a must for sport. I know I always go on about it, but it's a must for a comfortable sports bike. You need cruise control, don't you? No, you really do. And so. The one thing that I might do in time is I might invest in, uh, you know, the cr a cruise solution for this. I know that there's that MC Hammer or MC Cruise, isn't there? <laughs> MC Cruise, yeah. Yeah, yeah MC Cruise. <laughs> MC Hammer. <laughs> Let's be honest, you can't touch it. And the other thing, I, you know, I've obviously put a full titanium system on this, which is brilliant. It's not too loud. It's just, you know, it's, it sounds purposeful, I think, doesn't it? But not, it's not ridiculous. Yeah. And, um, you know, I want to spend the winter now. This is probably going to be my last ride, I would imagine. And then I'm going to, I just want to sort of tart it up a little bit now and get some trinkets and spend a bit of money just making it a little bit more my own. So that's the plan, really. So, yeah, it's a great bike. And it is, it's definitely met my expectations. And I, I know people will go, oh, you're mad. Or some people will think that I'm mad because there are more premium bikes but you know i got the good deal on this as well i think it's fair to say i won't go into what the deal was but it was a good deal but there you go so yeah i don't know how it compares to your what year is your gig sir uh yeah mine's uh, 2008 so I, w I would have brought it today but uh, the problem with the gear linkage flew off last week and i haven't got a new i need a new nut so uh, I would have brought it and obviously we could have done a, a GSX-R chat. So I'm on the H2 instead. But yeah, mine's in 2008. I mean, I've ridden the new one around Cadwell Park, comparing it to mine. And it is a better bike and, you know, it does everything slightly better. It's better yeah. in every aspect, a tiny bit. But, um, but, you know, mine is still brilliant though. So, but yeah, they're, they're just great bikes. Yeah, you, I think yours is sort of demonstrated to all of us that a bike that's that age, what is it, 2007, John, is it? 2008. 2008, 2008 big button. You know, just how amazing they still are and how capable they are. And you can, you know, I've, I feel that over the years I can get lost in the hype of the latest and greatest models, but actually they're still really good, aren't they? And it's a bit like this, really. It's like got no TFT and it's a little bit dated in some areas, but actually it doesn't really matter, does it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I do like the fact that mine's a bit raw with no electronics and all that. Yeah. Well, I won't think that when I put it in a hedge one day. I'll be <laughs> well, well, I hindsight it, where was my traction control? Yeah. But I, li you know, I like the idea of it being raw and naked. But yeah, we're going to uh, Compton Abbas today, which is like a little airfield, other side of Salisbury. First time I did it last week, and it's actually a really nice little run which isn't too far, you know, when you haven't got to go up at the absolute crack of dawn. So we're going to pop up there, look at a few airplanes, have a coffee, and enjoy some of Her Majesty's finest 60 mile hour limit roads before they change them all to 30s, which they're talking about. So got the old, uh, a new bike, haven't you, as well, a 690 now. You've joined the KTM crew again. <laughs> I have, again, exactly. So I've got a KTM 690 SMCR. Uh, which actually talking about fueling and smoothness is really not good at all. Nah, they're meant to be bad, aren't they? The new Euro 5 ones. Yeah, it's the latest 2022 Euro 5 and it's, um, it, it almost has no fuel under sort of three or 4,000 and it, it, it sort of cuts out half the time when you're trying to ride it around town, it's horrible. So the plan with that is I've already bought, uh, so at the moment it's got just a, a can on it, an arrow, uh, end can but it's totally stock fueling and filter so I've got a a DNA stage 2 it's called I've never ever used one before DNA stage 2 filter and I've got also the 
all the canister stuff that you get. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about. If you're not into supermotors, but it comes with all this canister stuff, which is all to do with emissions. So rip all, all that, that emissions, off. Emissions nonsense, uh, basically. Emissions nonsense. So that's all going to be ripped out, hopefully over the next week or two. And then um, you and I are going up to get it all basically custom mapped. Uh, a place in Bristol, do you want to name the place or you don't want to name the place? Yeah, it's CJS Racing. So my mate Chris at CJS Racing who mapped this, he mapped oh, he mapped my old GSXR as well actually. So what, we're going to take both of them, we're going to take Greg's new Euro 5 bike and see if we can sort the fueling on that. I'm also going to take my Supermoto because at the moment I've got Power Commander and a generic map. So we're going to com compare and do a, do a power run with the what I've got loaded on the moment on the Power Commander and then do a custom map on it and see how much better it is basically with the, with the custom map. So for all those which are saying, are you going to get your 7, 690 on a dyno anytime? It is going on the dyno and it's going to have a custom map and we can see, you know, the difference with the, with the Power Commander and a generic map. So that would be quite interesting. So we're going to go up there, we've got a day with Chris and both the bikes is going to map both of them. So uh, if, you if you love your dino -y mapping videos, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, it should be good, John. I can't wait to get it done because it's so bad at the moment. It's almost unridable. But you can't even put a power commander on the Euro 5 bike, can you? That's the trouble. Yeah, they can't, um, they can't adjust the ignition timing is the big issue on my one. So, a bit greasy around here. Let's have a look at the old girl. Oh, she looks nice. Thank you. Woohoo! So does the H2. Yeah, another thing about the Jixer, I think, actually, I know you're going to be doing some editing, but is this, I think it's fair to say there are no, there aren't any niggles. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, and it's only after a while when you've been riding it and you're not thinking about anything that annoys you, you actually, there's no niggles. You know, the gearbox, the clutch, everything, it's just so smooth. I think I think Suzuki's are really good. I'm not saying they're the only ones, but they're so good mechanically at making a bike really easy to live with. And I think that is one of the things, you know, the, the, the plastics aren't as good as other makes, I don't think, but mechanically, I think they are really, really sorted, personally. They always ride nicely, don't they? The, the, the gearboxes are gorgeous to use. Like you say, it's, it's just not, they're very, very easy to live with, aren't they? They're really easy to live with. And that's the thing, exactly. I'm not putting out there is the fastest and most focused track bike or any of those things, but just as an all-round road bike, they are really, uh, really, really good. Yeah, no, I agree. So I don't know what the plans are for the new thousand, even if they're going to bring one out, they obviously ditched MotoGP, haven't they? So who knows? Well, there's rumours there may be a new one next year or an updated one, but I don't know, I guess we'll find out soon. All the, show, all the shows are starting, aren't they? If you look at the GSX S 1000 GT, that's got like the TFT dash and all that, you know, I, I, it's got to be coming to this bike, hasn't it, I would imagine, yeah. Strom's got that as well now, even the V Strom's got that dash now. And so it's a bit weird that their, their main bike doesn't have it. Yeah, I, I think there'll be a, an update next year with the dash and maybe a few other things, who knows. <laughs> Valley down there. Almost here, just up here on the right. The runway calf. Well, we've got a Philly range. Uh, here we go, yes. Oh, it's still a lot of money, mate. It's 19.4. Should be 23, 19.4, 19 and a half. Is that the black edition? I want the black edition. Oh, it's a factory. 19 and a half. It's got gold wheels in, Johnny. Yeah. Has it got gold wheels? I don't know, the factory, oh, the uh, black edition. Has, yeah. Isn't it? One there, yeah, I don't say it's the black edition. They've gone for a very full egg, egg, egg baguette, so that's decent. Yeah. You got what you have before lunch dinner today, though, yes? <laughs> <laughs>
That does look good. That's my morning sorted. That made me feel slightly better about dropping the bike. Console yourself with a full brekkie. Console yourself with a full brekkie. Eight quid. So, uh, yeah, so that's it really, guys. Thanks for uh, joining us to Compton Abbas. And uh, we will get more of Greg on the channel. I know he's been a bit lacking. We've both been busy. We will sort it. But uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What has he done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. I've just dropped my H2. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>